Okay, so this is a little funky. We're gonna add a light sensor to our EV3 Creeper because they don't come out in the light. They only come out when it's dark out. But EV3 Creeper, he's on his side. I'm gonna rotate this guy a little bit and you should be able to see, yeah, you can see the sensor ports right inside there. So I'm gonna take one of our shorter sensor cables or connector cables and I'm gonna connect that into port one right up on the top. Let's see if I can do this without completely obscuring the view. So it's port one. That's connected. Well, that's good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of our light sensors here, and I'm just going to attach two connector, two black connectors to that. And this doesn't have to be really specific. You can put it here, there, anywhere, so long as you know it can see some light. I.e., don't put it in a bag and throw it in the trash. That'd be bad. So I'll switch our views up a little bit. So now <clears throat> I'm just going to take our light sensor, with our two black pegs. I'm going to put that. Let's see. It's going to be kind of upside down. It's going to be facing the front of our creeper. So I'm just going to connect it to these three pegs right here, those connections. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to take our sensor cable, run it along the back side. Things you want to look out for, you don't want this cable getting stuck in the treads. So if it's hanging in there and getting caught up, you know, see if you can maneuver it around. You might have to just wrap it on the top side just like that. We're not going to be trying to detect anything really specific. We just want to get overall ambient light. So this can be, you know, super funky. That's okay. Okay, so this is awesome. We've just connected a color sensor or a light sensor to our EV3. And assuming that you're connected with a USB cable or a Bluetooth connection to your EV3 right now, you can go down here to port view and you can see what's connected to your EV3. So you've got the small motor A, the two motors, larger motors on B and C, and then we've got the light sensor down here. Seeing that it's connected is kind of cool, but if you right click on these guys or left click on these, you can also change what you want to be looking at. So we could select color, reflected light, or ambient. We're going to go ahead and select ambient light intensity. And if you look at your color sensor right now, when we do that, the small light that's lit up on your color sensor changes from red to blue. So that kind of lets you know that what mode you're operating in. Plus, these numbers just changed. They went from 22 or from 1 to about 22. That number might be really different depending on how much light you've got. So for instance, if I turn the lights off in here, it goes down a little bit. The camera view doesn't show much, but the light sensor used to be reading 22. Now it's reading 15 or 16. Let's go ahead and turn the lights back on. What else can we do with this? Uh, just seeing the information is neat, but let's let's change our program so that we can actually do something with this information. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select the loop block and everything in it just by clicking and dragging. And you can hit Command C, Command V, or go to the Edit menu and select Copy and create a new program. Let's go ahead and call this Dark Test, and then you can go up. Oops, Dark Test. You can either go ahead and click on the edit menu and click paste, or you can hit command V or control V to paste it, depending on whether or not you're on a PC or a Mac. I'm going to drag this over. No, I'm not going to do that quite yet. Before I drag that over to my start block, I'm going to go down here to the flow information and select the white weight block. Weight as in don't do that until I tell you to or wait for me. Uh, right now it's going to wait for a period of time of one second. Let's change this. To color sensor and we're just gonna want to see we're gonna want to compare the current ambient light intensity so right now it's set at 4 which is if you scroll down less than so you can say equal to not equal to greater than greater than or equal to less than less than or equal to we're just gonna keep it at number 4 which is less than and let's double check so what did we see when we turn the lights off we turn the lights off. We're seeing a value of around 15. With the lights on, we're seeing a value of around 22. We can also do something as simple as just putting our hand in front of the light sensor, and that drops it down to 12, back up to 21, 22. So let's say, hmm, what's in between that? What's in between 15 and 22? You've got 7, 22 minus 15 is 7, so let's set it to in between that. Let's drop it down by 3 or 4. So let's just set it to 22 minus 4. That brings us down to 18. So this command is going to wait for us until the light goes below 
18. So if we just drag this back here, our program, we're going to hit play or start. It's going to go here. It's going to check a light sensor or the color sensor, and it's going to say, is the ambient, ambient light below 18? And if it is, it'll do the rest of this, and it'll get just get stuck in this loop four times. And if it isn't, if it's above 18, it'll just wait right there for us. So let's go ahead and see what happens if I click the play button here. Cool. Nothing is happening. Now, if I go ahead and turn the lights off, Creeper starts moving. And it's going to keep on moving, even if I turn the lights off or on. It doesn't stop. It's just been told to keep on going and going and going and going until it falls over the edge of this table, or we tell the program to stop, or it finishes the loop.